Greetings of the day to all the viewers. My name is Neha Mukherjee and I'm an intern at the UB Advocate. Today my topic of discussion is child sexual abuse and the legality of the same in India. By definition, child sexual abuse refers to subjecting a child to any form of sexual activity by an elder adolescent or by an adult. There have been innumerable cases of child sexual abuse in the recent past, including the infamous cases of Katwa and Unnao. Before 2012, all the provisions dealing with all forms of sexual abuse had been prescribed in the IPC. However, the inadequacy of the same sections to protect the rights of the children have been discussed in the famous case of Sakshi versus Union of India. Sakshi, an NGO dealing with the rights of the women and children, filed a petition in the Supreme Court of India, complaining that the sections in the IPC are inadequate when it comes to protecting the rights of the children, as guaranteed to them under Article 21 of the Constitution of India. Section 375 of the IPC criminalizes only the traditional definition of rape that is the penovaginal intercourse. Section 354 talks about protecting the modesty of a woman. It, however, neglects the need to protect the modesty of a man as well, and further, it does not give us a clear definition of modesty itself. Section 377 criminalizes unnatural sexual offenses. It, however, does not tell us what exactly it means by the term unnatural sexual offenses. Therefore, although the Supreme Court upheld the definition of rape as prescribed under Section 375 of the IPC, it urged the Parliament of India to look into the points highlighted by the petitioner as they were intended to uphold the system of justice in the country and to make the legal framework more capable of dealing with protecting the rights of the children in the country. Therefore, in 2011, the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Bill was introduced in the Parliament and the same was passed in the year 2012 as an Act on 22nd May. The POPSO criminalizes insertion of the penis, any object or any part of the body into the urethra, the vagina or the anus or even the mouth of the victim. It criminalizes constant following, flashing, passing, sexually colored remarks, child pornography, as well as making a child touch someone in an uncomfortable way or touching the child in an uncomfortable way as well. The POXO makes it mandatory to report a case of child sexual abuse. In order to do so, the toll-free number of 1098 may be dialed. A member from the Child Welfare Committee will be sent, will be there with the child in all the stages of the proceedings to make sure that the socio-psychological well-being of the child is maintained. Section 40 of the same Act provides free legal aid to the victim. However, the issue of mandatory reporting has been criticized by many organizations as it takes away the right to privacy of the victim. The victim might not want to go through the strenuous process of criminal justice. In that case, this Act will punish a person who does not report a case of child sexual abuse to the police. Also, it also takes away the right to privacy of the mothers who seek abortion and who are below the age of 18 years, even if they have been subjected to sexual abuse. Although, according to the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act 1971, it is not mandatory to report the identity of the person seeking abortion, the medical faculties who give such facilities are sceptical when dealing with such issues. This Act also takes away the right to consent of those adolescents who are below the age of 18 and engage in consensual sexual activities. Despite all of these criticisms, it must be noted that the POXO has been successful in protecting the rights of many children and has been successful in criminalizing the required offenses and granting punishment to the ones who are at fault. In the Katwa rape case, the same section of all the provisions in the POXO were applied and all the six accused had been given due terms of imprisonment. Therefore, with that, I would like to conclude this discussion with all prayers and hopes for the safety of all our children. Thank you so much.